there was a huge amount of investment, both the public sector and the private sector, in facilities and infrastructure for that event for 2010. But I think I must immediately say that the private sector largely knew what they were doing, and they were not investing for 2010. You cannot invest for a four-week event. They were investing for the longer-term um, potential of the tourism industry, largely. But just to say, what, you know, was it worth it? And there's a number of dimensions to that. The first one, I think, for the industry in South Africa, not everybody, but those who knew what they were doing in the right place at the right time, who did the right marketing, it was an event that probably saved them in terms of a poor year when trading was not very, very strong. This event really helped a lot of businesses to survive. And to give you a few statistics around that, um, records were smashed, not just broken, but smashed. At things like retail turnover at the AXA stores and at the stores and the restaurants and the nightclubs and the Victorian Alford waterfront, at the cable car at Table Mountain. So business was incredibly strong. The hotel industry saw an increase in average room rate during that June last year of 61%, and an increase in average occupancy of 18%. And that's across the whole country, including some of those establishments that actually didn't see 2010 business, and in some instances saw a slump in their, their normal markets. The one that I'm a bit surprised about is beer sales were only up 12%. I really thought they would have gone up a bit more. But nevertheless, 12% is still a good increase. Visa card spending up 55%. A company called Torves, which is South Africa's major inbound tour operator, created an entity called TEAM, which is an acronym for something, um, to handle inbound um, uh, ground arrangements for the VIPs, the sponsors, and people like that coming to the event. Their statement is that the World Cup month, they made, five, they made as much turnover, or more turnover, than their regular inbound operations make in five years. I think that's phenomenal. And that company has gone on to be working in London for the Olympics, in Brazil for the next World Cup. Thornybush Game Reserve, which is not necessarily where you would think the World Cup was happening, said that their turnover in June was two and a half times their top month they'd ever had in the past. So a lot of businesses did well, and in a year when trading was tough, it helped a lot of businesses to survive. But that investment, what did we really do it for in the tourism industry? What did we really do it for as a country? It was the profiling of South Africa. And to give you a bit of an indication of the impact that profiling had, amongst the, and you can judge the numbers yourself, but around the 360 to 400,000 people who came, depending on which survey you read, 88 to 94% say they would highly recommend South Africa for other people to come here, to their friends and relatives. Between 83 and 96% say they would come here again. And that's the tip of the iceberg, because what was really happening is South Africa and Africa were being profiled on the global stage. So just the, few, the, the final alone, TV viewership was 700 million people. And the cumulative viewership over the whole event is probably getting close to 40 billion viewers that saw it. And you know what? It was the first one that was in cyberspace as well. So Twitter records were set. There was tweets per second reached 3,200 at peak compared to a normal average of about 7,500. And during the final, people from 172 countries tweeted about the World Cup happening. And I have other stats on internet site access. For instance, during the opening match, there was record news internet site access of 12.5 million. The previous world record was 8.5 million when Barack Obama was elected. This is just scratching the surface to try and explain that impact this event had globally. Another statistic is South African Tourism's brand tacking survey that goes out globally shows a 35% increase in the propensity of people to think of coming to South Africa in the short term for a holiday. A global magazine aimed only at high net wealth individuals globally did a survey on where they would want to go on holiday in 2011. 23%, second highest, said South Africa. So that's, I think, what the investment was for. What we need to ask ourselves is, are we creating the right leverage around what we achieved last year to make sure our tourism can grow and have the potential to grow that it should have. And there, I think, the jury's still out a little bit. I think the investment climate in this country and probably in other African countries is not as positive and not as welcoming as it could be. Our investment facilitation agencies, our, our um, development finance agencies, our grant systems and those sort of things, they sound good on paper, but when you want to mobilize them to get investment to come in, it really is a challenge. It's still a tough market out there for South Africans. The World Cup created some, of a, some, some extent an oversupply, which was people wanting to bring their projects forward and get them open in time for the World Cup. We would have said in normal circumstances that oversupply would work out in probably two to three years. 
it's looking like on current numbers four to five years to work out of the system. So that makes it quite tricky. Occupancies are constrained, room rates are constrained at the moment in the industry. So it's a tough industry to look at and to get into. It doesn't stop some projects being good projects. I know one hotel which specifically emphasizes the conference industry and training industry and is its own generator of demand effectively, which is doing fantastically well and looking at adding about 80% more rooms and probably will be very successful. But I think there's a lot of other properties that are still in this struggling environment. The recession hasn't worked its way out totally. We have an oversupply situation. And in South Africa, the strong REN didn't help us either, so that also constrained growth. So did we do the right thing investing in the World Cup? I am absolutely sure we did. Has it been a total panacea? No, not for everybody and not for everything. But should we be able to benefit from that supply that we brought on stream? We should. We need to just leverage that fantastic profiling we got and, and really look at bringing more tourists and leisure tourists to our country. And I think we can do that as, a, as an industry and as a country. And I think there is the potential always for that to overflow into Africa. So we know that a lot of our tourists who come to South Africa first will go to Southern African countries next. We know already there's a lot of country hopping of tourists will package the entire region. So the benefit of the profiling it shouldn't just be found for South Africa, but again, our neighboring countries or the rest of Africa, we need to also leverage that profiling and sell ourselves into the markets and, and show and demonstrate what we've got and make it investor friendly for people to come here. Some of the um, neighboring countries had great expectations, didn't they? Mm. Were they met? Well, I think those who had realistic expectations, they were probably met. And I don't want to single out different countries, but I think a country like Namibia recognized that it was a challenge to them to maintain their high season, which is effectively June, July, August, uh, their normal overseas tourism markets while there's a big event happening next door and to minimize the crowding out factor. And they went a long way to doing that, but they did see crowding out and they did lose markets. Some of the other countries expected huge numbers. You used to hear things like 25% of World Cup visitors to come through their country was never going to happen, the expectations were wrong. So unfortunately there, because of these unrealistic expectations, and that happened within South Africa as well, where there was unrealistic expectations that soccer tourists would go everywhere and stay in every little game reserve or Berg holiday resort or whatever it is, it didn't happen. So were there losers? There were losers as well. Okay. In South Africa, uh, even a, a centre like Durban, and I don't think people from Durban here, got far less visitors than they had anticipated because it turned out how Teng was the epicenter and from how Teng you could reach virtually eight of the ten venue cities and get back home that night. So. Say that again? If you were based in how Teng, you could reach eight of the ten venue cities. It was only really Port Elizabeth and Cape Town that weren't a day trip away. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, so, terrific profiling for South Africa and, 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 and other countries. Uh, people say they are going to come back. What is going to be the reality in 2011 in South Africa? Well, in terms of our overseas tourist arrivals, we're already seeing a fairly comfortable uptick in the numbers of arrivals, and we're starting to hear the industry talk positively about the future booking situation. So I think it's very early in 2011, but I think uh, I, I say we see, should see pretty good growth. Now, if I was predicting 2011 last year, I would still say you might see an overall decline because of the high base because of the 2010 increase in tourism. Yeah. So everybody mustn't panic if it comes out at the end of the year that we show a small decline because it's almost expected with the high base we had from last year. But if you were to back out 2010, I suspect we're going to see fairly good growth given the world's economic situation this year. The strong round is our biggest other challenge in that. Right. What's your view on the neighboring countries benefiting? I would see that the neighboring countries will definitely benefit. There's certainly, the Africa positiveness would rub off and has rubbed off, I believe, on perceptions of all African countries, but particularly sub-Saharan African countries. And it was an opportunity to some extent to get their message out about what was to see and do in the neighboring countries, which was the real benefit, not getting the soccer tourists, but getting your message out about your destination. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor.